Yeah, it's time we shut on the Vita. Hey guys, what's going on? Jordan here. Today we are finally going to do the video that I promised. Yes, maybe that was two months ago now, but don't worry about it. We're here. We're doing it. That's all that matters, right? So 10 things the Nintendo Switch does better than the PlayStation Vita. I definitely dragged my feet with this one and I almost feel bad about it because of the fanboy war in the comment section of the last video. Well, it's not very tame. So it's not exactly fair that we had the first video and we didn't have the rebuttal. So I put together a list of 10 quality reasons the Nintendo Switch is better than the PlayStation Vita. And for those of you that have been following the channel for a while, you guys know the Vita is one of my favorite systems of all time. And not only that, I'm wearing a PlayStation shirt. So I hope that gives me some credibility that I'm going to start criticizing one of my favorite consoles that ever came out. So yes, as an adult, PlayStation has been my favorite brand in gaming. But that doesn't mean that I hate the other guys. In fact, I own all the other guys. And I play all the other guys. It's like having children. You say none of them are your favorite there's always that one you know who i'm talking about so this list is in no particular order in fact i'm just gonna go in the order as i wrote them out but at the end of this video let me know in the comments below what you think the order is from important to least important i'm really curious what you guys think so without further ado let's dive into it so first on my list is the most obvious one on my list. And the reason I say obvious is because most people think this is the reason why the Vita itself flopped. Well, not only in the West, but globally. And that's memory cards, the expandable memory for the system. See, Sony has a history of using their own proprietary memory in their systems, whether that would be the PSP, the PS Vita, or even their old cell phones used to use the Memory Stick Pro Duo. But what Sony discovered was that with the Pro Duo, people were able to easily have the PSP, download and install games illegally on it, and when they were designing the Vita, they needed to figure out a way to stop the pirating, and their decision in the end was to create their own proprietary memory card for the Vita. Which on paper sounds perfectly fine as long as it costs exactly the same, but it did not. No. No. No, it did not. The Vita memory card was horribly, horribly expensive. The 32 gigabyte Vita memory card was $120 when the system launched. And you're probably saying to yourself, well, this was back in 2012 when the system came out. No, 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 no. Check out these prices currently on Amazon. Even today, the 32 gigabyte Vita memory card is $78. So if we go ahead and compare it to the Samsung Evo memory cards, which I use in all of my Nintendo Switches, 128 gigabyte card currently on Amazon is $15.99. Interestingly enough, Nintendo has not dealt with much pirating at all with the Switch, especially in comparison to the PSP and even the Vita. If you're familiar with the Vita, people love modding this system. And when you mod the system, you can then download and install those games illegally. Stop all the downloading. So that plan backfired on Sony. One point for the Switch. Next up, we have a modern controller layout. Now you may ask, what does that mean exactly? Well, what I'm referring to are clickable sticks and the addition of triggers, a feature that we're used to on all of our modern game consoles. But no, no, not the Vita. The Vita did not have a clickable left and right stick, nor did it have triggers. It had L and R bumpers and a back touchpad, which you would very rarely find yourself using when playing an actual Vita game. Where it would come in handy is with remote play when you're playing a PS4 game remotely on your Vita. The system would split the touchpad into four regions. The top two would be L2 and R2, and the bottom two would be L3 and R3. It made for playing PS4 games really, really awkward, and honestly, the control sucked on it. What I love about the Switch, and even the Switch Lite, is that it has all the same features outside of analog triggers. Your sticks click in, you have your bumpers, and you have your triggers. And those are the same controls, whether you're playing on the standard Switch or the Switch Lite. Now, to be fair, Nintendo does have the upper hand because the Switch came out after the Vita, so Nintendo could have looked at the shortcomings of the Vita and said, well, how can we improve on that? And they sure as hell improved on that. Next up, we have going from handheld to TV mode. And yes, the Vita is capable of doing that, but oh my God, it is so much more complicated than the Switch. We all know the Switch. You're playing in handheld, drop it on the dock, it's on your TV. End of story. No, 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 no. With the Vita, if you want to play your Vita on the television, you would then have to buy a PlayStation TV, which by the way, was literally just a Vita in a little set top box. So if you're playing the game off a cartridge on your Vita, you just save your game, make sure it's saved to the cloud, quit it, pull the 
cartridge out, throw it into the other console, hook it up to your television, download your cloud save, and then you're able to jump back into your game. And trust me, th that, that was a tedious process. So not to belittle Nintendo's creativeness, but they definitely had the Vita to look back on again to see how not to do it. Because Nintendo definitely did it the right way. So next up is something that's a bit broader than just one specific system. And this is more Nintendo versus PlayStation as a whole. And that would be censoring of third party games. Now this made the rounds in gaming news about a year ago where third party games were coming on the Switch. They were mostly Japanese games localized for the West where Sony was actually having these games censored for PlayStation and Nintendo came out and openly said, we will never censor a game, which is very unlike Nintendo. I was really, really impressed with the stance that they took. Now, I personally have not been affected by this. There's no game that I bought for either system that was censored. But the fact that Nintendo stood up for the creator's original property that they intended to display just shows that they still have some integrity. So in the Vita versus Switch video, I did mention that the Vita does have Bluetooth support that is significantly more open than what the Switch offers. But what the Switch lacks in Bluetooth support, it makes up in USB support. You can hook up almost any USB controller to the Switch and you'll be able to play with that controller. But the Vita, that was never an option. And not only that, you can hook up a wireless keyboard to your Switch, which I demonstrated in a previous video where I reviewed the uh, Switch Joy-Con keyboard grip. Man. And that's a lot to say. But with the Vita, the USB port was really just used for charging and transferring of media. So we have to give a lot of credit to the Switch for how flexible it is with USB accessories. And speaking of accessories, oh my. The Switch has so many accessories. I remember that even in the Vita's Prime, it was so hard to find a case for the system. It was so hard to find a grip and so hard to find like a grip type case for it. In fact, the grip case is on one of my Vitas right now. I've had for like five years and I had to order that thing from China. I couldn't even find one locally. But as you guys have seen my many reviews, there are so many awesome grips and cases and accessories for the Switch and Switch Lite. It's endless. I mean, go on Amazon right now and there are just pages and pages and pages of different cases and different grips, modifications you can do to your Joy-Cons. There is just so much. And then of course, controllers. There is definitely no shortage of third-party Switch controllers on this channel. In fact, I don't think there's really a third-party market for any other game console compared to the Switch. It's really amazing what is out there. The next one on the list, I know I'm gonna get a hard time for this, but we have to be honest about it. And that's that the Switch has significantly better third-party support. But before you come at me in the comments, I know the Japanese third-party games are phenomenal on the Vita. In fact, I think the Vita has some of the best JRPGs out there. But Japan's not the only country in the world that games and or makes video games. But by year three, there was almost zero AAA support on the Vita from North America. It is literally the opposite with the Switch. Insert random studio, hey, let's re-release this 10-year-old game on the Switch for $60 and everyone buys it. It's ridiculous. I still refuse to spend $60 on The Witcher for Switch. But even today with the PS5 and Xbox Series X out, Ubisoft's Immortals Phoenix Rising came out on the PS5, PS4, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and the Nintendo Switch on the same exact day. Now, not every game gets ported to the Switch, but the fact of the matter is the Switch is still getting big AAA support four years into the life of the system, which in my opinion is one of the main reasons the Vita just couldn't make it. Another reason why the Vita really did flop in the West was marketing. Sony did a really strong push on the Vita the first couple of years, especially with when Assassin's Creed 3 Liberations came out for it and also MLB The Show. And they really had something going there with MLB The Show 12 because in the commercials, they were showing that you could play your game on your PS3, save it, pick up your Vita, load up the same game and continue your save from there, which was pretty amazing. We had nothing like that at the time, at least nothing in the modern era of gaming. So not only did the system support cross saves with a lot of games, I mean, a lot of games supported cross save with it. When the PS4 launched, you were able to remote play your PS4 on your Vita. And by then, in 2013, Sony just stopped talking about it. Could you imagine the resurgence in sales for the Vita if they pushed that hard and made sure people knew that, hey, look at this little handle of ours can play PS4 games remotely wherever you are. All you have to have is an internet connection. That would have been incredible. But no, 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 no. 
No, we have Nintendo though, who marches out there and tells us why in big, bright, beautiful advertisements, why we need to spend $60 on Super Mario 3D World again. I just don't get it. It's that guy's voice, whoever he is, who does all the commercials. You gotta see these floors of the hotel for yourself. You just trust them, you like them. Everything's all red and happy. Nintendo's like the Disney of Japan. They know how to get in your head. Hmm, gross. Next up was a feature that was probably my favorite takeaway from the Nintendo Switch reveal. I'm talking about like the first one where they showed somebody pulling the Joy-Cons off and playing a two player game on one system. I thought that was so cool. I really did. When I got my Switch, that was like one of the first things I did with my friends. Like, hey man, let's do this, this is cool. It was just one of those things where like you couldn't do it before, so I had to do it now. But they didn't limit you to the Joy-Cons. In fact, you could pair any Nintendo Switch controller to the Switch and play multiplayer off the tablet. Although I really couldn't imagine playing four player split screen Mario Kart on a 6.1 inch tablet, but I'm sure it works for somebody. So all that being said, the Vita did not support that at all. Sure, it had online multiplayer, but you definitely could not play a two player game on the Vita. Last on my list is console availability and variety, which seems really strange that I'm praising Nintendo for console availability. We, we, we all know the games that they play. Even over the last year when the Switch was hard to come by, Nintendo was still trying to pump out as many as they could. They opened up additional manufacturing to get more units over the West. And even last week when I was over at Best Buy, they had an entirely full stock display of Switch lights. And not just that, Switch lights in every color, well, except for the Pokemon one, unfortunately. That's so dumb. You still promote the game. They should've just kept making that system. That was a cool looking Switch light. Unfortunately, I can't say the same about the Vita. In the West, the fat Vita came in black, except for with Assassin's Creed Liberation, they did do a special edition in white, but that was a very short run. It was black the whole time. We compare that to Japan, where the system came in black, red, and blue. Not really that exciting either, to be honest. Where it got really exciting though, was once the Slim model came out. There were about 15 variations of this console in Japan. Do you know how many we got here? Two. It came in black and it came in blue. That's it. But no, 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 overseas in Japan, they had an entire run of multicolor systems and an entire run of solid color systems in some pretty, pretty cool colors. But we never saw those over here. In fact, my lime green Vita is a Japanese import. Over here in the West, it felt like Vitas just stopped showing up in stores three years before Sony said they were ending production on them. Availability was just so scarce. It was really sad because really at the time, it didn't make any logical sense why they weren't supporting the system anymore. There was no handheld at the time that could compete with it. I mean, let's be honest, the 3DS hardware wise is a joke in comparison to the Vita, but they stopped making them and stopped shipping them and people stopped buying them. The Switch on the other hand, you can't watch a kid's show without seeing a commercial for one. So between great promotion and having available stock in a lot of variety, the Switch is still doing really, really well. So there we go guys, that was 10 things that the Switch does better than the Vita. As I mentioned in the beginning, let me know in the comments below what order you think those should be in, and also give me a suggestion for the next video. I'd like to see what you guys could challenge me to compare. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you do hit that like button. If you're new here, make sure you do hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell to be notified when videos do go live also. You'll find links below for all my social media, Discord, Teespring, and Patreon. So I'm really excited to read these comments, and I'm also probably scared to read some of these comments. So until next time, this is Jordan. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. <laughs>